I've said this before, I love heavy weapons in video games. In most PvE games, I would usually pick the heavy weapons because of the like the weight behind them. It's really satisfying to deal huge chunks of damage with just like a few hits. Now, when it comes to PvP games, it's a bit different because the archetype of heavy weapons usually involve it being slow and cumbersome, which usually makes them um, a worse option in these games. I think that the sword and shield or just the long sword are also pretty cool weapons. Uh, but, uh, the heavy weapons, hammer and greatsword have always been my favorite. So when the greatsword was announced to Brawlhalla, then you could probably imagine how excited I was for it, but it wasn't at all what I expected actually. The combo system was very unexpected, but it was still very cool. And uh, it's not like I was necessarily disappointed with greatsword's release. Um, I was just, you know, surprised at how ungreat sorty it was. Jay and signatures are very heavy hitting and they have a ton of weight behind them just as I think a great sword should. I think Jayon's signatures actually <laughs> represent the weapon better than the weapon itself. Uh, but when you do actually play the great sword, it's not very slow at all or anything. It's kind of just it's literally a big big sword, a bigger sword, you know? Not not a great sword. Initially, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is cool. I'm actually fine with this. And balance didn't actually seem to be a problem at the time. I think there are quite a bit of people who would agree with me on this. Uh, you can even see this on the Great Sword trailer, the horribly aged comments, because of course, people were gonna practice it, they were gonna optimize the weapon, and eventually break its limits. So I, I haven't actually played against much Great Sword. Uh, when I did play it, the enemy wasn't exactly you know the best at the weapon, so I had like zero trouble with the weapon for the most part. It was just figuring out how the weapon worked and of course college stopped me from playing Brawlhalla for a bit so I wasn't very much into the game uh, but I was there for BCX and oh my god the impact of Greatsword on this year's biggest tournament was so astoundingly clear that you couldn't go two matches without seeing a JN on screen and the dittos were, were absolutely horrid. Like if Sandstorm wasn't on screen then it really wasn't even worth watching. I didn't actually think Greatsword was particularly overtuned until BCX actually. One game in particular caught my eye and really showed me just how little room for punishment there was on Greatsword. In the match between Lil Capt and Hardy MJ, Lil Capt could literally do nothing. He was on the defensive running around for the majority of the matches and Hardy would not let up on the pressure at all. And there's no slight to the players here, we're all just victims of the devs above anyways, but yeah, this BCX really put into my mind questions about this weapon. Particularly, is Greatsword even a well-designed weapon? Well, let's see, what do we define as a well-designed weapon? Uh, well, I think that although different people have different opinions on the matter, most people probably follow the same relative philosophies, so I'm gonna share mine here. I've made weapons before and balanced them in brisk battlers, so I do have some experience on the matter. I think I have a pretty good idea of what makes a weapon, or even just a character kit in general, uh, well designed. So here are my points that I follow when making a weapon. 1. The weapon should be satisfying or fun, because if the weapon isn't fun, what's the point? Like, the only reason you'd play it then is probably because it's overpowered, and that's not a healthy reason to play a weapon. I'd say Greatsword though is actually pretty fun. It's a subjective topic, so of course not everybody will enjoy playing it. I don't play it just because I think there are more fun options, uh, but I can see that a lot of things you can pull off on Greatsword can be very satisfying, especially those like really long grounded combos, uh, all those reads and stuff. Those are probably really fun to pull off. Number two is player expression. Each weapon should have multiple ways to play or approach situations so that different players play the weapon differently. For example, the remote mine in Brisk Battlers is a mine that you can place and detonate on command. You can play this weapon more like a trap weapon where you place it somewhere and wait for someone to step over it, or you can go in aggressively by using your increased movement speed to plant a mine next to an enemy, run away, and blow it up just as you leave its blast radius. When a weapon only has one way to play or has few interactions with other moving parts in the game, it can become boring. Greatsword though? I don't really know honestly. I've just seen so much Greatsword at this point that it's all the same to me. Uh, there probably is many different ways to play it, I just can't see it due to the overwhelming amount of Greatsword players. But yeah, I think I think it's, it's pretty okay here. Next is skill expression. Now this one is very important to me. I absolutely love playing games where I can just show off my skill. Oh, 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 oh my god! What a catch. Told me. 
Uh, I think that creating a good skill ceiling and floor is very significant when designing weapons. The thing you'll hear the most is probably the phrase, easy to learn, hard to master, which is, of course, you know, one of the best ways to design anything in games. Beginners can still play the game, but pros can take it to the next level. Oh my god, okay. What's up, you, buddy? He's got this, he's got this, he's got this, won't be five, he's got this, he's got this. won't be five. Let's watch the boy. Oh, that was bullshit! Oh shit! What's going on? Triple! Keep going, keep going! Get that bitch! Get that bitch! Oh shit! Oh! What the fuck? Holy shit! Jesus! A good example is the bomb in Brist Battlers. Anyone can jump and press left click to throw bombs at people, but skilled players can use bombs to launch other bombs to farther distances, or be able to roll them in such a way that they can deal with close range matchups too. Greatsword is definitely more of a higher skill floor, high skill ceiling weapon, which is okay because you can always change the skill floor, just not the skill ceiling. Low skill ceiling weapons, especially in PvP, are kind of iffy because then you'll have players who play really well, but then they lose to someone who presses Q on their keyboard. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now there are going to be so many people who say Greatsword is easy because these guys are the sheep, all right? They're the sheeple. The bandwagon, zero head, no brain, can't have their opinion kind of people. They just take whatever the pros say and regurgitate it. But I am not here to regurgitate your guys' opinion, all right? I think I pick up things pretty quickly, and after a while of playing Greatsword, I am still pretty lost, like, all the time. And whenever I play against the Greatsword and Diamond, those people don't even use Greatsword to this fullest potential. Like, only when you get to the highest elo do people really start making that weapon shine. If you're gold or below, and you're complaining about Greatsword being broken, then please shut up. You're not even good enough at the game to understand what broken even means in Brawlhalla. Finally, we have balance. A well-designed weapon strikes a good balance between its strengths and weaknesses, and has them clearly defined. The extremity of these two counterparts does not really matter, as long as they're equal to each other. A very good example of this is the Grenade in Brisk Battlers. The Grenade is an insanely good zoning weapon that can chunk enemies at mid to long ranges very, very well. But the moment a weapon gets close to it, the Grenade just it dies. It just it has little to zero options, uh, as throwing the grenades on themselves will just blow themselves up. So this is just a common weakness that a lot of ranged weapons have by nature. They're ranged for a reason, right? They, they're strong in that regard, but when it comes to close range, they often lose. Now this point is where Greatsword seems to fall. It's fun, it takes skill, and is pretty player expressive, but the problem here is that the weaknesses aren't clearly defined at all if they're even there in the first place. The strengths of Greatsword is that it can set up reads for itself very well, recovery is abnormally strong, it has some pretty quick aerials that hit like a heavy weapon, gravity cancelling a light attack just makes it do the final attack, so that makes it very versatile. All the light attacks seem to have very low recovery time even though they're dodgeable, not landing an attack doesn't stop a chain, there's just there's just so much good about this weapon. And when you take into account the signatures of the legends that use them, well, my god, dude, Jayun is crazy. Now, the weaknesses, as far as I can see, is that uh, you can dodge behind a greatsword player or they're stuck in a chain, I guess. Like, <laughs> I, I actually don't even know, dude. This weapon is just chock full of good things. There's so much pressure that you can put out with this weapon without much room for error that it's just... It's, it's not okay. I'm not sure I would necessarily say it's broken. I think that if a weapon is literally broken, then that means that that weapon kills the game. You literally play it or you lose. Right now, I think Greatsword is just way over tuned. All right, I, I think it gets away with way too much and we need to tone it down with some more weaknesses. Not necessarily new weaknesses either because I'm sure the devs envisioned a certain way to beat Greatsword. It's just that it's not defined clearly enough. You can't really see that weakness because its strengths are overpowering it. I think that making the light attacks more punishable if whiffed is a very good start to balancing this weapon, uh, but I'm not a pro. I don't play at the highest level. I don't play the game nearly enough to go into full detail. So I'm gonna back up a bit, back into my original question. Is Greatsword a well-designed weapon? Well, considering it passed three out of four of my points, I'd say it's pretty good. It just has problems in the balance department and toning it down will definitely put it in a good place. If you ever misconstrue the definition of a well-designed weapon, then just think about what a poorly designed weapon is. Let's say a weapon that punishes you for doing good. 
or a perfectly balanced weapon that is completely linear in gameplay and boring as hell to use. That would be bad. But the concept of Greatsword I think is actually really good and really interesting. It just needs some balance. I still would have preferred the weapon feel more like a heavy weapon, but I think giving it more recovery time will actually, you know, give it more of that heavy, clunky feel that Greatswords should have. And that would be balanced by its incredible strength, which is, you know, generally how it goes.